Hey everyone, this video is on time dilation and length contraction. Time dilation and length contraction are two of the three implications of special relativity. We'll discuss relativistic momentum in a separate video. The effect of time dilation can be understood by first imagining a thought experiment. Imagine we have a spaceship traveling at a fraction of the speed of light. Inside the spaceship, there's a light source that shoots a beam of light towards a mirror on the ceiling of the spaceship and this mirror will then reflect the light beam onto a receiver right next to the light source. The time interval between when the light leaves the light source and when it reaches the receiver can be measured by a clock on the spaceship. And according to the astronaut, this clock is T naught. So the distance between the mirror and the light source is capital D. From the perspective of a stationary observer on Earth, who sees the same path traveled by the light beam to the mirror and being reflected by the mirror onto the receiver. The observer will measure a longer time because during the motion of the light beam, the spaceship is traveling to the right at a very fast velocity v. So instead of traveling up and down as observed by the astronauts, the light beam will travel up, denoted by s during this time. And because the speed of light is constant in a vacuum for all inertial frames, and that includes the astronauts and the observer, since light has to travel a longer distance, the time between when it leaves the light source and when it reaches the receiver should be also longer. The quantitative relationship between the time measured by the astronauts and the time measured by the observer on Earth can be analyzed by considering the path travel by the light beams. For the astronauts, light travels to the mirror and back, which is distance 2d, so this is equal to the speed of light multiplied by time t naught. For the observer on Earth, this is different because light travels a triangular path, which is 2s, in time t. We can analyze the path traveled by the light from this perspective by constructing a right angle triangle as so. This vertical side is d, the distance between the mirror and the light source. The other side of the rainbow triangle can be expressed in terms of the velocity of the spaceship. In the same amount of time, the spaceship travels the distance v, which is the velocity of the spaceship, multiplied by time t. And this time is measured by the observer on Earth. So in half the time, we expect the distance to be half. So this is why this is v times by t divided by 2. We can apply Pythagoras' theorem to this right angle triangle, through which we'll get s squared is equal to d squared plus v t over 2 squared. From the two perspectives of the astronaut and Earth, we can also express s squared as c times by t over 2 squared, d squared as c times by t naught over 2 squared plus vt over 2, four brackets squared. The two in the denominator will cancel out. By simplifying the squares, we'll get c squared t squared is equal to c squared t naught squared plus v squared t squared. If we divide both sides by c squared, we'll get t is equal to t naught squared plus v squared over c squared times by t squared. Now, let's group all the terms with a t squared to one side. So t squared minus v squared over c squared, t squared is equal to t naught squared. We'll factorize t squared, and we'll divide 1 minus v squared over c squared on both sides to make t squared a subject, and we'll square root both sides to make t the subject. So the denominator becomes the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So the time observed by the person on Earth, which is t, is equal to t naught measured by the astronauts divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared, which is the velocity of the spaceship, by c squared, which is the speed of light. This equation is the mathematical expression for time dilation. It outlines the relationship between the difference in time between observers in different inertial frames of reference. For the observer outside on Earth, light has to travel a longer distance due to the motion of the spaceship. And as a result, a longer time, which is t, 
is observed. For the observer inside the spaceship, who's moving at the same velocity, and that is the astronauts, there will be no difference in the distance traveled by the light, because the light only has to travel upwards to the mirror and back, and as a result, the astronaut will measure a shorter time, and this is t naught. So in this equation, t naught is referred as rest time. This is always measured or observed by a person in the same frame of reference as the events. So the event in the previous thought experiment is the light traveling to and from the mirror in the moving spacecraft. T is the time measured by the person in the different frames of reference as the event. So this is the person that was standing on Earth observing the motion of the spaceship. In any scenario where the event is moving at a very fast speed or a relativistic velocity, t naught is always a shorter time. It is a shorter time because each second ticks slower. So let's say on Earth we measure a particular event to last for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. So this is t. The time observed by the astronaut on a spaceship, each second will become longer. So one, two. This is t naught. So t naught, which is the rest time, will appear to be shorter because each second becomes longer compared to what a second is equivalent to as observed by a person in a different frame of reference. It's important to be aware that the effect of time dilation, that is the difference in time between the two observers, whether they are inside the frame of reference as the event or outside, only becomes apparent and obvious when the event is moving at relativistic speed, that is at a significant fraction of the speed of light. This graph helps us visualize exactly that. The y-axis is the factor difference between the two observed times. A number two means that the time observed by the person on Earth is twice the length as the time observed by the astronaut on the spaceship. This means t over t naught is equal to 2. You can see the double in time difference only occurs at roughly 0.86 times the speed of light. We only start to see a difference between the two observed times when the velocity of the object approaches 0.3c, that is roughly one third of the speed of light. And the disparity increases exponentially as the velocity approaches the speed of light. Astronauts travel at a velocity of 0.9c to Alpha Centauri. An observer on Earth measured that this journey would take 4.86 years. So this duration is t, because this is measured by an observer on Earth. How many years will the journey take in the frame of reference of the astronauts? So this is t naught because the astronauts are inside a spaceship that's traveling at the velocity of 0.9c. So t equals to t naught divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. t naught will then become t multiplied by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. t is 4.86 years multiplied by 1 minus 0.9c squared divided by c squared. The c squared and c will cancel each other out. 4.86 multiplied by 1 minus 0.9 squared or square root, which equals 2.12 years. As expected, the astronauts will measure a shorter time because the actual duration of each second or one year becomes slower. In addition to the concept of time, the concept of length or distance also becomes relative to the speed of light. Length or distance will appear to be shorter for a moving observer. That is when an observer is moving relative to the start and the finish end of the measured distance. If we are measuring the distance between two clouds, for a station observer who is not moving relative to the two clouds, let's say the distance here, which is L0, is roughly 2.01 kilometers. When the person is moving relative to the two clouds at velocity v, the distance that he or she will measure will become shorter than 2.01 kilometers. In this case, we call this the contracted length L. So length or distance will be, appear to be longer for a stationary observer. 
who has no relative velocity to the start and finish of the measured distance. So when it comes to the length contraction, it is very important for you to first distinguish whether the observer will observe a normal length or a contracted length that is affected by special relativity. So whenever you approach a question, you need to ask yourself this particular question. Are the two ends, that is the start and the finish end of the measured length or distance, are they moving relative to the observer or to the person? In the first scenario, the two clouds are not moving relative to the person who is measuring the distance. That means this is the rest length that is not contracted. In the second scenario, because the person is moving at a velocity v relative to the clouds, they will measure a length that is contracted or shorter compared to the previous scenario. A particle is traveling through the Earth's atmosphere at a speed of 0.75 c. So this is three quarters of the speed of light. To an earthbound observer, the distance it travels is 2.5 kilometers. So let's say the starting point of the particle's motion is at A and it finishes at B. So this is the particle, it travels at 0.75 C. Let's say on Earth, we have a person here who's measuring this distance. And the distance they measure is 2.5 kilometers. So the question here is, is this the rest length or the contracted length? Are points A and B moving relative to the station observer? No, so this is the rest length. This is the original length or distance that's not affected by special relativity. From the perspective of the particle, because it's moving away from A towards B, the two points will be moving relative to the particle. A will be moving away and B will be moving towards the particle. So its length will be L and this is the contracted length. Our length contraction equation is L equals to L naught multiplied by the square root of one minus V squared over C squared. L is the distance from the particle's frame of reference. This is equal to 2.5 kilometers multiplied by one minus the square of 0.75 C divided by c squared. Now the c and c squared will cancel out and what we'll get here is 2.5 multiplied by 1 minus 0.75 squared and this yields a shorter distance of 1.65 kilometers. The concept of length contraction also affects the dimension of an object that's moving at a relativistic speed. For example, if we take a ping pong ball at rest, when it's not moving, the dimension of ping pong ball is unaffected. When it begins to travel at a fraction of the speed of light in a horizontal direction, the dimension in the same direction becomes contracted as measured by a stationary observer. That is an observer in a different frame of reference as the ping pong ball. So the length of an object appears to be shorter for an observer that is moving relative to the object. The length of the object appears to be longer. In other words, it's unaffected. This is a rest length L, naught, for a moving observer who is stationary relative to the object. So imagine if there's a person sitting right on top of this ping pong ball. The person will be moving at the same velocity as the ping pong ball, but they will be stationary relative to the ball. So from their perspective, the length or the dimension of the ping pong ball in the same direction as its motion will be unaffected. So again, it's very important for you to identify whether the length measured by the observer will be contracted or it will be the rest length. And you can identify which one it is by asking yourself the same question. Are the two ends of the measured distance or length moving relative to the observer or is it at rest? A spaceship travels at 0.75 c. An observer measures the length of the spaceship to be 500 meters. A spaceship that's traveling at 0.75 c. To an observer that's not in a spaceship, the distance between the front and rear end of the spaceship is 500 meters. So let's call the front end here point A and the back end of the spaceship to be point B. If the spaceship is moving relative to this person, then points A and B will be also moving relative to the observer. 
the distance or length of 500 meters, this is the contracted length. The length of the spaceship at rest, this will be the unaffected rest length, L0. So the length contraction equation is L equals L0 multiplied by 1 minus V squared over C squared square root. L, which is a contracted length, is 500 meters, and we want to find L0. So L0 is equal to 500 divided by 1 minus 0 0.75 squared, or square root. The rest length is approximately 756 meters. Like time dilation, the effect on distance and length due to special relativity only becomes apparent at relativistic velocities. When the velocity of an object reaches the speed of light c, the length of the object measured by a stationary observer becomes zero, which is physically impossible. So this is the reason why objects under special relativity cannot reach the speed of light. On this graph, the difference between distance or length measured by different observers only becomes apparent when the speed reaches a fraction of the speed of light. Length contracts and decreases exponentially as it approaches the speed of light. The object's velocity will only approach the speed of light as it will never reach the actual speed of light.